All right, let's have let's take a walk then. All right. We're just going to walk through the garden and eventually talk about your piano playing. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> ben, you've been a professional pianist for ten years, over ten years now. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think you've developed over the last two years or so? <laughs> um, <laughs> I suppose I, I had the success of the BBC Young Musician, and then. Um, you know, I I wanted to, my parents wanted to take things slowly, and uh, I, I didn't do that many concerts. But okay. kind of, kind of, um, so from 2011 or just before that, uh, lots of exciting things happened. You know, first night of the proms yeah. and my recording contract with Decca. So kind of mm. since then, I've been I've been getting busier. Okay. My kind of diet is quite um, varied when it comes to repertoire and composers. I, the piano repertoire is so huge, and mm. there's such a lot of um, hidden gems there. Um, and what about, um, are you talking generally about recital, solo recital work? Is yeah, well, I mean, music? well, I love chamber music. It's uh, the thing I enjoy most, I think. So mm. um, uh, last year, I, uh, this year, I did um, Brahms Quintet and Dvorak Quintet with two different um, quartets. Uh, so I try to find, I try to do it whenever I can, but I okay. mean, it's, it's difficult to fit everything in. Does the particular space really affect how you play, uh, you know, in particular venues, does it, does it really affect your performance? I think it does. I mean, the, you probably adjust a lot of things subconsciously um, and some things consciously as well. I mean, people say if you play in a very acoustic, which is very swimming, you should use less pedal, but then mm -hmm. really it is it's difficult to make that kind of adjustment. As you're playing, you act to the sound you hear. So um, I tend just to play, I mean, I know some artists would not do this because they'd feel like they would taking away the freshness for the concert, but I like to play everything, mm. as in just to see how all passages work on the yeah. piano. So what first drew you to Granados' piece? Um, I don't, I, I, I've known this piece for a while. Um, I think my mother might have introduced me to it initially. Mm. Um, if you like it very much. And the, the famous one from the set is the one that I, I play today, the Maiden and the Nightingale, um, which was played by a lot of great pianists. I think. Oh, it's, just, it's a very rich work. I, I don't know if you think this, but when I was listening to you playing the Granados, I thought that there was a, sort of a, a looseness and an improvisatory quality, yeah. which I wasn't sure if that was, is that inherent in the music, in so the score, music, or is it from you? This piece in particular is like oh, that. Okay. I mean, if you see the score, it's uh, and the markings that he is, you know, accelerando, rallentando, accelerando, run, you know, all the time. There's this yeah, looseness really fluid, and freedom it, yeah. of the pulse, and uh, his music's so colourful, and it's a very, it's very sort of idiomatically Spanish. Um, I haven't played a lot of his music. Uh, um, I played a set um, called Forces Poeticos, which I actually recorded on my last CD, mm. um, which is some of his earliest music and very charming. Um, set of waltzes all very very but Goeskes is maybe his sort of his most famous and richest work. And what can you tell us about this particular piece? Well Maiden this particular piece is made in the Nightingale mm -hmm. and um, Goeskes is um, a set which is inspired by paintings by Goya um, and not by particular in paintings I believe but by mm -hmm. the um, by the sort of you know the, the world of the of his artwork and um, the maiden is singing into the night and um, her lover is about to have a duel with uh, another man and shortly afterwards he is he is killed in this in this duel um, and um, so she sings and then the nightingale responds but the nightingale's call is is not sort of beautiful melodious in mm. the same way that the maiden's singing is it's quite sort of mocking and, and that's a bit dry. we hear right at the end of the yes. piece yes it's quite a But there's there's some sort of ambiguity, isn't there? That, mm -hmm. For me, it feels like it comes yeah, it comes very suddenly there's at the end of the sharpness piece. and then a sweetness and then yeah. a sharpness and then a sweetness. Ah, it's lovely. Cool. When you're programming recitals, is that something you th you think about that that you know there are pieces that have immense sadness and that you need to complement them with? Yeah, you do think about that. I mean, you try to construct a recital program. I mean, it's a, it's a non exact science, obviously, mm -hmm. and um, but I mean, you think about. Uh, 
lengths of pieces and you think about emotional content of mm. pieces and you think about different styles and how they complement each other. And uh, my first piano teacher was my mother, so oh. um, she started me um, at the piano and has been um, great ever since. And um, when I was younger, she would travel with me and I'd have her who is in rehearsals with orchestras and at mm. concerts and things, and I always had that feedback, then, which mm. I think was very helpful. Um, and so, yeah, very supportive family. Um, I had four older brothers, but um, none of them are musicians. Mm. They um, went, went on to other things. What do you think about your career? Um, it's, just, I don't, it's just what I do, they have <laughs> their careers. I just, I'd just like to know where you feel you are as an artist right now. <laughs> um, um, I'm in London. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm in, I don't know, I'm learning all the time. Mm. It's, it's a huge piano repertoire, I'm just trying to learn. So you feel that you're constantly moving well, just on about, then. You know, just doing concerts, but all the time trying to expand and grow as a musician. Mm. I think that's really nice. That right? That's really nice, there you go.